a first uh, uh, presentation in the very first page. Uh, so the question, uh, maybe to introduce myself, my name is Confrey Alianji, I work for WWF as the Innovation Lead uh, here in Kenya. And I launched the innovation program, which is called Panda Labs. And uh, our role is to look how innovation is supporting all the conservation work that we do. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, uh, or our biggest impact in Kenya is uh, uh, safeguarding the, uh, the Nakuru National Park as a rhino sanctuary. So WWF bought the land and uh, gave it to government uh, uh, agency called uh, Kenya Wildlife Service uh, to take care of the sanctuary. And of course, uh, National Park is the biggest uh, san rhino sanctuary in Kenya. We have others, but that's how we started uh, uh, doing our conservation work. We work now on marine uh, plastic recycling. We have an energy program, climate change program. We have uh, a freshwater program. We also work on sustainable consumption and production. That is on food and sustainability. We also do a lot of work on um, uh, policy and uh, we we push a lot of policy and also uh, there's a program called sustainable finance uh, which is also a very big uh, area of our work in, uh, in WWF so um, uh, just to take you through what uh, uh, we'll be talking about today is uh, so uh, to start uh, so green jobs and uh, the future of work uh, uh, so the area where I work is actually the biggest area for uh, where we can actually create uh, green jobs. So conservation and environmental um, uh, conservation is actually uh, an opportunity for young people in Africa, young people in the world also to uh, start uh, creating employment and uh, even achieving SDG number eight for themselves. And I've actually highlighted the opportunities that exist especially the growth of green jobs uh, to bring uh, and how we can bring a green lens to any job organization. We also have a lot of uh, how uh, green jobs pathways, that is uh, the skills we need, uh, the, what type of education do we need to acquire and career pathways also for those who are still figuring out uh, is conservation or ec uh, the ecology a space for me to work in. Then all corporates or manufacture from manufacturing all the way to um, uh, from, all the, from manufacturing all the way to uh, those who are working in banking, etc., they actually have a res responsibility for sustainability. So if young people can actually just have ideas on how they can help corporates or companies or multinationals on how to pursue their sustainability mandate, then you'll actually create jobs for yourself in this area. So that is one. Uh, uh, and please ask questions on the chat. And if, you need, if any of you have asked access or to the document that you are, you've not been given, just ask me to give you right away. Number two, I'm going to share the, some of the uh, six pathways that I see, uh, 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 the ecology or future of work actually playing a role. So number one is uh, the conservation, both wildlife and nature. So conservation space, and especially now, is actually uh, uh, one of the biggest opportunity for the youths to actually start looking for opportunities to work and uh, even uh, uh, actually create change. Uh, so the change makers that are out there, if you want to create change in the world, uh, find a way to be connected to nature, find a way to be connected to wildlife um, uh, conservation, find a way to be connected to uh, forestry management, restoration and uh, agroforestry, tree planting, et cetera. Number two is uh, waste recycling and renewable energy. So find a way to uh, uh, find solutions for waste recycling and renewable energy. And we have uh, high hydropower, we have green energy. Uh, uh, right now, electric cars and uh, are becoming a big thing. Solar uh, becoming a very big thing. So that is a, a very big opportunity for us. Another pathway is regenerative agriculture. So regenerative farming is uh, using the traditional ways of farming uh, to, uh, to regenerate nature so that we can maintain nature the way it was using uh, organic, uh, the organic traditional ways of farming. Uh, because what is happening is that a lot of people, or farmers are using uh, pesticides or, uh, or products that actually destroy the soil and it's difficult to actually replenish nature. So we are actually, uh, trying to ask people to move to other regenerative farming. And I'll be sharing more information about regenerative farming and what WWF Kenya is doing about, about it. 
Another area of potential is the green tourism. So in Kenya, uh, the green tourism actually are very key area and uh, tourism actually one of our second uh, uh, income for government for, in terms of, sort of taxes and uh, etc. Yeah. So they, we have the biggest park in um, the Masai Mara, uh, Savo and among others. And uh, Kenya still has the big five and uh, we pride ourselves in the biggest uh, uh, wildlife species. Uh, so th if we have any young people out there or youth or even uh, globally, if you want to create solutions for tourism and uh, uh, this could go all the way from gaming, how to uh, the, the future of communication for wild, wildlife communication, future of storytelling, in gaming or using um, uh, either animation for wildlife tourism, et cetera, et cetera, or virtual reality for wildlife tourism. So those are very big opportunities that are not so many people are actually exploring. So if young people of today can actually start exploring these areas, you actually have a very big opportunity to, to take it to the next level. Another big area or pathways for ecology and future work is, the corp is in the corporate organization. A lot of corporates right now, you can mention them like from the biggest, from Nestle to uh, in, uh, in Kenya, EABL, Dejo, uh, Unilever, Coca-Cola, all, all these organizations are moving towards sustainability. And they are looking for ideas or people who have ideas on how they can actually push them, themselves towards sustainability. We have launched a plastic recycling project in uh, coastal Kenya uh, to work on plastic waste, among others. So if you have ideas on, or if you have any solutions in, around this area, or you, if you are a sustainability expert and you work with any multinational, tell them that I have a, an idea on how you can actually do your CSR in a better way. That will actually be the best way for you to uh, get jobs. Or if you are a student and you're wondering, how do I uh, get a job or where do I, in which area can I get my, do my masters? These uh, six areas are actually one of those uh, opportunities for you. Another uh, opportunity that I want to mention is green finance. So green finance is uh, the new innovative financing models for conservation. So we have green bonds, we have uh, a, a carbon credits, we have, uh, and you've heard about NFTs, you've heard about uh, wildlife credits. So all these are, uh, we have heard about nature-based solutions. All these are opportunities for us to uh, innovate around financing for conservation. So this area also provides opportunities for young people to, uh, to work. And there aren't actually many experts in this area. So uh, some of us that have just started exploring them are, like uh, we are talking to, ar around them as experts, but we do not have many years of experience. We have reports that have been read, written about this area. So uh, start exploring this area and uh, you will actually thrive in the next um, 10 years. You guys will actually be the experts who are leading uh, the future of work around this, uh, this, uh, these key areas. So some questions that are open in the air are, um, what are the green jobs and green skills in the future of work? What are the green economy and nature-based solutions uh, and uh, that will actually uh, uh, provide income for communities, provide livelihoods, and also at the same time, restore nature uh, or maintain nature the way it is. How is technology shaping uh, the green e e economy recovery after COVID-19? Then uh, do we have any research around uh, nature-based solutions? So these are, should be questions for you that you need to be exploring now. Another area is that uh, we need to uh, pick a bank on a platform that already exists. For example, the SDGs. Uh, SDG number eight talks about future of work and uh, decent jobs for youths and many uh, before 2030. So do you see any opportunities for you to create uh, decent jobs in the ecology, uh, ecology space, in the conservation space, in the environmental space? They actually exist a lot of uh, opportunity in the green jobs uh, 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 environment and we need to just uh, start thinking widely uh, enough. One of those areas is uh, especially creating knowledge. If you started uh, uh, right now with technology and YouTube and Instagram, TikTok, uh, like uh, you can easily be uh, a thought leader by just sharing knowledge and creating content around uh, either a particular problem around any uh, conservation challenge in your in your own country in your own area and people will actually look look at you as an expert 
uh, you, you, there are a lot of uh, our parents, a lot of young people who do not have capacity for conservation work or ecology and how why our environment is important. So you can start uh, building capacity for use and uh, before you know it, you'll actually create your own job uh, or future job uh, 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 starting just now. You can start advocating for policy change because governments haven't done this very well. You can start advocating for policy change in the area of um, uh, in the area of uh, uh, sustainability and uh, uh, green jobs. Uh, for the first time, WWF actually engaged the government, and we developed something we call the Green Green Economy Strategy for 20 is it 2020, uh, 2018 2025. So the Green Economy Strategy is what government is using to for all development work. For example, if they are building a railway, if they are building uh, if if there's any construction going on, they are building roads. So the green economy strategy is a policy that actually asks government that before you build a road, make sure that uh, if you cut down any trees, make sure that the trees are, have been repl replanted. Uh, if you are going to build any, any building, make sure that it's green, uh, it's saving energy, and uh, either it's, it's your solar, etc., etc. Yeah. So all those things have actually been um, highlighted in the uh, green economy strategy that uh, WWF and many other organizations were part of. So uh, uh, youth of today, and uh, you guys especially who are on this call, you actually have so many platforms for you guys to tap into. Another area is um, uh, uh, research and also piloting nature-based solutions. I'm not sure if, how many of you have heard about the word uh, nature-based solutions. So nature-based solutions are uh, ventures or ideas or conservation enterprises that can actually uh, support uh, nature and at the same time provide livelihoods and employment for, for people. We have tourism, we have agroforestry, we have um, a, a, whatever ve com ventures or enterprises around food, a beekeeping, etc. So ventures like those actually uh, support nature and environment. So we need to, young people need to start thinking about how they can um, uh, they can go back to the basic uh, regenerative farming and I'll be sharing more about it. Uh, how do you have any connect? Don't forget where you came from. If you live in a city uh, and you maybe uh, you have a rural home or you have a village where you came from, like myself, I lived in the village for many years uh, and um, I only came to the city for university education and uh, I live here now, but um, I go back to my to my village. I go back to uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, people where I came from are actually they have this knowledge. My, I make sure that my parents is using uh, 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 the the knowledge I gain as university and the knowledge I gain as I do the conservation work. Also, my parents actually have this knowledge so that they can actually continue to uh, they can do things differently and, uh, than how they they used to do them. So if you have, uh, if you've never either uh, connected to nature or if you've never been connected to a rural, uh, a rural area or you've never been to, or you were born in the city, try find a home, try to find where your grandfather came from or where your grandmother came from. So go back to, or, find, or try to be connected to a, to a, a, a like to a place uh, or to, a place where you can actually play a role in uh, in ecology and um, environmental conservation. It's very important. Uh, lastly, before we have questions, I'll take you I'll take you through the pathway number 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 three, which is regenerative agriculture, and uh, just let you know what it is. So, uh, in Kenya, for example, uh, so the natural resources are, are un under immense pressure. So Kenya's economy is 80% 80, 80 nature-based and um, uh, we lack diversity per se. So 60% uh, uh, of our land is degraded, meaning that uh, either we've used a lot of pesticides, either we had, uh, uh, some of the community members had a lot of cattle and they still participate, uh, whatever do, uh, past, uh, they are still pastoral. They keep 100, 100, 100 kettles on, on a small piece of land and they destroy the, that land. So how can um, we have also a wildlife actually competing for the same space with, uh, 
with uh, with human. Then in uh, WWF we call it human wildlife conflict. So you, you you have wildlife moving away from the protected areas, which are either conservancies or uh, or national reserves, and moving away towards um, uh, community land and destroying crops, doing crop raids. So how can we uh, how can we use agriculture or regenerative farming as a, as ideas on how to restore nature to its uh, 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 to its to its form? Uh, so this is what regenerative agriculture is all about, and uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a system of farming uh, principles that uh, increases biodiversity and enriches the soil and improves watersheds and enhances ecosystem services. It also offers resilience to climate instability and higher health, and uh, and also actually, you if you if you have you do we practice in regenerative farming, your food is actually more organic, and uh, people will actually uh, you will have more access to markets when you have uh, either eggs that are you see when you go to the supermarket, people want uh, I don't I don't know the word, um, uh, so they want maybe organic eggs and not just just those that have been uh, graded. So there are so many opportunities for us in that area. And uh, we see a lot of organizations, NGOs trying to do the same. We see corporates like uh, a, a Pepsi trying to do either source, uh, source products that have been uh, a, a, a sustainably produced. And uh, we also see a company like Nestle or Unilever also as, asking people that we will only buy products that only are sustainably produced product that did not destroy the environment as they were being produced. So this is a very key area for you guys uh, to start thinking about. And you'll actually get, you'll be in the next five, three or four or five years, if you start focusing in this area, there will be a very bigger market for you, either job-wise, or if you are a, a business person, you start on, in this area, it's actually an opportunity for you to start now. Uh, WWF is doing something about this, and uh, as part of my work, I have launched a uh, venture studio, which is a company that creates other companies to build a replicable model for regenerative value, especially for smallholder farmers in Kenya. So that's um, what we are doing, and we hope that uh, our work supports entrepreneurs that are in this area to continue to sustainably produce and uh, get access to market those people were asking for sustainably produced product, uh, products. Over to you, and I'll take questions at this point. And uh, uh, as we take questions, I also want to uh, just uh, uh, throw the question back to you. How do you think we can actually support uh, uh, regeneration, or which areas do you think uh, provide other opportunities for green jobs? So I'll share the link on Miro so that we start ideating. I know you guys are experts and you are also smart in your own way. You can find, you can give us ideas and we can start actually thinking, ideating and thinking of ways to create our own green jobs in future, especially in the conservation space. I welcome questions as we, as I prepare the mural. Let me see, I see everyone is there. Any questions? on the chat. Any questions? Yeah, so you can ask me which areas uh, you can, um, uh, I've highlighted some of the areas of pathways. Uh, so if you have maybe a more, if you want to uh, me to clarify something, you can ask now. So we can go straight to our mural. I'd like us to participate in uh, ideating or coming up with ideas ourselves to some of these questions. Uh, for example, yeah, Tendai is saying she's uh, preparing a question. So as we prepare, let me share with you the mural. Uh, and I want us to ideate and brainstorm on how, on this actually topic ourselves, uh, because you guys are think tanks. You have ideas and you have experience. So in uh, my innovation work, I always say that uh, ideas are actually with the people who have experienced the problem. Anyone who's never experienced any problem, uh, they will never have any ideas. If you've lived a good life and uh, you are all enjoying, it's difficult for you to be an innovator. So innovators are those who, guys who have immersed themselves in a problem. So make sure that you, uh, you enjoy spending some time ex uh, just in, mass in immersive learning about a problem, uh, be it either environment, uh, poverty, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. 
So now let's go straight to our mirror. And the first question I would like to ask, what I want you guys to just uh, use the sticky notes to put, to write in the in the in the in the uh, to write in the sorry the sticky notes that that appear on the screen. I wish I was sharing my screen. I am not able able to, but uh, you guys have access. So let's start with the first question: How can technology? Uh, what is the role of technology in creating green jobs in the ecological area or in the conservation space? So if you have answers to that question, let's just start shooting. Write them in the in the in the in the what do you call it? in the purple uh, sticky notes. Yeah. What is the role of technology in uh, uh, creating green jobs? If you have answers to this question, let's start uh, just writing them in the purple uh, sticky notes. Yeah. And for those who have uh, are passionate about. Um, the pathways that I shared, I shared different pathways for for green jobs in the uh, conservation space. I shared about uh, sustainability. I shared about uh, uh, I shared about uh, sustainability in the corporate space. I shared about regenerative farming. I've shared about uh, I've shared about nature-based solutions. So I'd like you guys to, if you have ideas on how we can create green jobs in any of these areas, you write them down in the sticky notes that are with the color blue. I can't see it. I can't see any of you writing. Is uh, are you able to write? Just click inside the the sticky notes and start writing. Are you are you able to write? Or you can voice it, and I will be able to uh, to write it on your behalf. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, are you able to share the screen so that uh, everyone uh, from your side? Thanks, country. So for me to share the screen, I think on screen, if that is okay with you. And I believe um, sharing the screen on just a moment. Thank you. So someone has written uh, that uh, technology is necessary for stopping global warming, I, I assume. Uh, any other? Uh, ideas you may have? Oh, so it's the video was on the other side. Would you like me to share the PowerPoint presentation? No, the, the mirror. Do you have access to the mirror board? Yes, yeah. yeah, so Josiah is saying technology can help facilitate agronomy through e-technology. Let me paste that in the mirror. So you guys will have access to this. Keep uh, Just keep writing and sharing those ideas and you can actually use this to actually uh, well, this will be a starting point. It will be your vision board for you to, if you think about, okay, so I like the presentation that uh, was made today about the green economy. And uh, at least from that idea, I got some ideas from the session and uh, you can come here and look at the idea that people posted and you can, uh, it should be your starting point if you want uh, to create green jobs in the future. Yeah? Or so yourself. I believe everyone can now see the screen uh, country. I'm Thank sharing. you, yeah. Thank you for sharing, yeah. Yeah, so let's, uh, uh, what is the role of technology uh, for in creating green jobs, especially in the conservation and environmental conservation space? So I'm 
just showing people how they can utilize the sticky notes on the left hand side. If you click on the text icon, they can get access to the sticky notes. Yeah, someone is saying bringing efficiency in, in, in different industri industrial sectors. Uh, we have ideas around smart farming, using drones to map, uh, soil testing, and um, uh, GIS mapping. Uh, any other ideas you have? Uh, there's an idea on um, mobile games advocacy virtual reality uh, technology can help to facilitate the agronomy through the e-economy uh, we also have uh, uh, we have also uh, access to markets We have access to markets, information to farmers. That is one, one role technology can play in, in, in creating green jobs, especially in the, the conservation space. Yeah, so someone is saying education and raising awareness, uh, which is very key. Any other, before we move to the next one, so someone is saying uh, to improve the sustainability in a way that you can develop through education and workshops and connecting people together. Yeah, you can use technology for, for that. Right now we have uh, technology for providing training via WhatsApp. It's called uh, conversational learning. Have you guys seen that? Uh, using WhatsApp to to test and even uh, do an entire exam via WhatsApp, yeah, conversational learning, very key. Yeah. Now, as we think about that, uh, Gloria, you can highlight on, um, on the right, the blue ones, the blue stickers. The question is, what type of pathways or well, which pathway did you uh, do you think as a more uh, which pathways among those that I shared uh, let me just remind us uh, so we have uh, conservation waste recycling regenerative agriculture green tourism corporates corporate sustainability and green finance so which pathway do you think uh, is a big, the biggest driver for conservation and how. So just write the pathway and uh, maybe highlight how and why you think it can actually influence the creation of green jobs, especially in the, uh, the conservation space. So for me, I, I can start maybe with an example. I can say finance. I think finance is the biggest driver. Uh, So 
So one of the ways is uh, investment. Like if we need green jobs, we, we, we decide where investment go. We follow the money. Yeah, so we are asking ourselves which among the pathways that I highlighted as uh, different areas that uh, offers opportunities for creating green jobs, which of uh, the six do you think would be the biggest driver for green jobs in, uh, in the future of workspace, like now or, or five years from now or 10 years from now? And why? Yeah, so for me, I've said finance because Finance is the biggest driver for markets. Uh, you follow the money and you have, uh, you can create jobs. Yeah, that's what I've said. And uh, yourself, maybe start writing and uh, just uh, give me some feedbacks around these pathways. We have nature-based solutions. We have uh, a, a tourism. So which pathway do you think will be, will be the biggest one for creating green jobs and why? So this mural board will be accessible to you. You can come here and anytime and uh, just look at it and uh, think about how, if you have ideas on where to now, uh, if you have been thinking about, okay, where, what area can I do my master's? What area can I do my PhD paper? What area can I uh, influence my siblings or my, the people who, are, who I know or the students that I mentor to start thinking about the future of work? This is actually the areas, yeah. Also, Josiah is just clarifying. Let me write that properly. Are there any questions that uh, are on the chat? Josiah says he supports finance. We follow the money. Uh, let's use the chat, guys. If you have any clarification you want to make or you want to ask questions about the work of WWF or um, uh, Henry, how are you? Uh, ask your question. Yeah, we can see you. or you have been thinking about these ideas and you want to know more, uh, please ask away. Yeah. Country, I also uh, see people lined up to request to join you on screen. Please feel free to approve if you want anyone to join in the conversation on screen. Okay, please, are you able to approve for, for me? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know why it's, I did the test yesterday. We have five people are queued. Uh, yes, I can see, see we have. Tata, Wilba, Usmala, Josiah. So how do I, how do I? On the green add button, let me see if I can bring in Josiah on screen. We just said, okay, I think you clicked on the X button. Now we go. The plus. Yes, you click on the plus. Green plus, we should be able to. Wait, did uh, no, we, the guys are still here? You can see Mohammed Ayatuli is still with us. So we only have one. Uh, I think, what did I do? Um, I must have declined the request instead of accepting problem i think josiah was online josiah if you'd like to try again to, to share try again yeah please yeah yeah and yeah. country can approve you to join him on screen
So we have uh, zero request in queue. Henry, you had a question? Uh, can we continue then to look at, uh, so we also have a slide for questions that are open in the air. So if you have any questions about what people have written and you don't know, uh, like you just are wondering, uh, like what does that mean? Or uh, what, do, what do you mean that uh, finance is the biggest driver for conservation impact? And you want to highlight, so you can just ask it in the, what color is it, in the orange uh, sticky notes. Then if you have uh, any ideas on how we can do corporate sustainability, please use the green sticky notes to, to highlight some of those ideas, yeah. Leticia, any question? Emily, uh, Blessing, Emmanuel, do you have any questions? Ben, Erica, Josiah, Henry, you have any questions regarding the presentation? All right, for all those that are still watching and listening, I think we'll just wait to hear back from country. Or his yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, yeah. So just waiting to see, uh, just following the mural to see if people are participating. Okay, thanks, country. Yeah. Can we confirm if everyone has access? Let me share again. So that's the mirror and the question was, uh, do you see any of these other areas? Uh, like how do you see sustainability in the corporate space providing an opportunity for us to create green jobs? So do you see companies like, uh, I don't know which multinationals are in uh, the different countries where you come from. In Kenya, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, Coca-Cola, we have Nestle, we have Unilever, we have PNG, uh, we have uh, manufacturing companies, cement companies, uh, we have uh, real estate companies, and all these companies actually have a role to play in jobs. So they, so I'm just asking, what are, do you have any idea? they should create green jobs for young people like our, ourselves. Yeah, so Josiah is asking, um, uh, Josiah, you can also uh, request to come to the screen. So he's asking, 
Uh, he's been following FAO for a long time now. Um, uh, thank you, Josiah, for your question. I happen to know a lot of people at the FAO, so if you still need the, the, uh, those networks, uh, feel free to reach out. I'll, I'll share my email for WWF and I can connect you to friends at FAO. So uh, he's asking, what ideas can we develop so as to help especially our fellows in the rural vill village? So Josiah, I think my question to you will be, first, what are the problems that you think people in the village uh, are facing. For example, maybe where I come from, I could say, um, uh, for example, like two, two weeks ago, I visited a village in uh, Eastern Kenya. So it's called uh, Yata in Kambani, a place called Machakos. And one of the biggest problem in this area is uh, water. So the area is very dry. So, uh, so they have a challenge with water. And uh, so these, uh, there's an NGO that is actually helping them to create water pans. So to build water pans so that they can actually uh, start growing uh, 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 crops that can actually have high yields. For example, they're, they're growing herbs, they're growing um, garlic, they're growing uh, chili, uh, bullet chili, and many other crops. And they're also doing a proper farming for a place that is very dry. So if you want to help or if you have ideas for the people in your rural area or the village, the first thing you need to think about is what problem are they facing? Once you know the problem, then the ideas will come later. Yeah. So don't start with the ideas before you identify the problem. And uh, sometimes when you're identifying the problem, try to figure out what is the underlying problem. Not Sometimes entrepreneurs or people who are experts like ourselves, we always very rush very quickly to start uh, solving a problem that is very superficial. But there is usually an underlying problem, like a root problem that is causing the problem that everyone actually is able to see. So you need to think like an entrepreneur. Look for the, pro the root cause problem, and that will actually give you access to a bigger market than if you solve the problem that is very uh, superficial. So that is actually what I will uh, tell you. First, identify the problem. Then once you've identified the problem, come up with ideas for this problem. Then uh, uh, as you do come up with ideas, uh, there are different uh, methodologies uh, for finding out who are the partners or who are the individuals that will actually uh, help me to work on these ideas or who, who can actually, can I partner with so that I can, um, access uh, the market to solve this problem. For example, the business model ma uh, canvas, uh, we have uh, uh, the value innovation canvas, uh, among others that you can use to, uh, to do ideation. I hope I've answered your question. Uh, please uh, respond to let me know if uh, if you feel like uh, I've answered that question, yeah. Any other question? And thank you so much, Josiah, for that question. And uh, feel free to uh, reach out if you like to get more answers to this, yeah. My email is on the profile and also I've shared it there. Any more questions around this topic? Thank you, Josiah. Do any of you have ideas on how we can uh, use corporates to create green jobs? So number one for me is uh, things that are coming on top of my mind. Uh, a lot of corporates are struggling on how to, with energy, uh, energy and uh, uh, energy efficiency. So if you came up with ideas on how to save power, how to measure how much energy is used in different companies, manufacturing companies, you'll actually be, you'll be in for good, for some good money. So those are free ideas I'm giving you guys. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, another idea around corporate is uh, for real estate companies. Uh, building green, uh, building green uh, infrastructure. 
and also uh, uh, green spaces. So because of development, uh, cities are losing green spaces. So if you come up with ideas on how to restore green spaces in cities, or how to create uh, green playing fields, and how to create uh, green, uh, how to create kitchen gardens, etc., etc., you will actually be in for some good uh, uh, Another idea for that is coming out for me, and thank you whoever you're writing, roofing, yeah. So someone is saying uh, roofing, uh, roofing gardens, perfect. Yeah, that, that's another area for green jobs. Uh, for corporates also, if you come up with ideas on how to save water. Let's say it's an EABL, I don't, uh, that's a company for an alcohol company in, uh, in Kenya. So if you came up with an idea on how they can save water, you'll actually be in for some good, uh, like you can actually start a business around there or even create a job for yourself and others. Another area is uh, how to solarization of, uh, of uh, tea industries. I don't, I'm not sure how many of you come from, in Kenya we have a lot of tea plantation, uh, but tea companies or manufacturing companies still use wood to, whatever to, uh, to heat up those chambers. So if you came up with uh, how to use green energy and uh, green energy on, and uh, you still maintain the quality of the tea, then you are in so for some good money. Another area is, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, what did I do? Another area is, um, the other area. If you came up with a policy, if you wrote policies, if for those who are lawyers, if you wrote policies around, uh, and you came up with good statistics, you need to have a lot of information, policies around uh, green economy and sustainability. You'll actually be in for some good money. If you started a company that does CSR for companies, or CSR consultancy, uh, that will be good opportunities for you. In uh, corporate, also if you started, uh, uh, we are almost done here, but uh, just last one, last one. Uh, 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 tourism, if you started uh, a company to measure how many tourists are coming either to Kenya or to your country and uh, how much they uh, measure their carb carbon footprint, uh, you'll actually be using technology, you'll be in for good money. Footprint and how they how they can uh, carbon footprint. Yeah, so I think that is that uh, from my side. I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, we'll be going back to the main session in a few. Thank you so much for uh, for being here. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Godfrey. I think we had a question from Mas Erika Mas Masaki. So it's okay if you can just read on the chat. It's okay to respond to Erika because before we can close. She asked, uh, so my question would be where any consequences to choose finance for personal instead of nature? Is it possible to? Yes, it's actually possible. So uh, it's that. Um, uh, so the reason I said finance is because uh, if you find any innovations in, um, for example, technologies around financing for nature, for example, we have cryptocurrencies, we have. Uh, uh, technologies connected to carbon footprints and cryptocurrency. We have technologies around green bonds. We have technologies around crowdfunding for conservation. So any financial, like any solutions around finance that drives investment into conservation or into uh, ecology, 
you'll actually be creating green jobs for many people or any financing for nature-based solutions or for conservation ventures, yeah. So that's why uh, you need to combine the two, yeah. It didn't mean that finance is just independent, yeah. I hope that is clear. Thank you, Confri. I think that yeah. was the only pending question we had from Erica. To everyone who joined us this morning, this afternoon, this evening, from wherever you are dialing in from, thank you so much for being with us. And thank you so much, Confri, for that amazing session. I've made lots of notes myself and found it absolutely fascinating. And I'll be looking forward to learn more about the green jobs and the opportunities for young people to enhance employment and entrepreneurship in any other areas of the green jobs and the different pathways that you've shared with us. Thank you all for your time and thank you for everyone watching. So if you want to join the next session that will be facilitated by YK International, please head to the breakout sessions and you can be able to join in. Don't forget to join us again this evening where we'll have even further discussions around the green economy sector. And I'm glad that Confi was here to kickstart the conversations with us today. So to everyone, have yourself a good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gloria, and uh, see you at work. Bye-bye.